Hello everybody, it's me Dominic, and today I am going to teach you how to make a main menu. Now, it's not going to be a super complicated main menu, there's going to be just an options. In fact, here I'll show you preview. Pop! Great sound effects, right? Um, so yep, today I'm going to show you how to make a menu. So, let's get started. So, first thing we need is a background, so then we have a background, uh, which... That totally makes sense, but okay. So you go over here to the image, so you right click create canvas. And what this will do is well create a canvas. So you can double tap on image or double tap on canvas, and that's what I'm gonna do and zoom in a bit. So you can scale this image however you want. Um and also to undo, you can click hold control and then click Z. So that will undo the last action that you did. So if I do this, that, and that, I can click on Control C and then Control C again and go back. So first things first, we need to change this. So we could just take this and scale it up like that. That works. But another thing we could do is go here, hold Alt, and then click that at the bottom right corner. And now scale it up. And also there's these anchors right here uh, here let's move this there's these anchors that basically i'm not exactly sure how to explain them without it being confusing uh it kind of tells it how to scale so let's undo stuff and then we got background okay so i have created a background image you can do any image you want um i suggest getting gimp and just kind of messing with that so take this image and drag and drop it here or you could click on this dot right here and go and select an image. So if you want a giant check mark, you could do that. But I suggest having an actual background or even a solid color is fine. Whatever you want. Second thing, or whatever number this is, uh, let's change the canvas scaler. So what this does is, well, if you have a different resolutions, it will scale differently, obviously, because the screen will be a different shape. So for so it could be really weird like it won't work for sometimes the scaling for buttons and stuff won't work so we kind of just need to do this which i usually do scale with screen size i do 1920 by 1080 which is the resolution of mo most screens there are 1080p screens at least as of right now and then kind of how it scales i'm not exactly sure how to explain this without being too complicated either um i usually just change it to 0 0.5 so then basically it scales equally up as it would wide or horizontally so yeah uh so we have an image so let me teach you something else so we have this image right here as you can see you can see it perfectly normal and it's in front of the background as of right now well if we take it and drag it behind the background it would disappear so this is how layering works like very basic layering works with the ui so always have the background at the top and also we need to rename it so right you can right click and then click rename or go here whatever you want okay named it background and then this image can just be destroyed or delete it all right so next what we need to do is create a button so you can right so you select this right click and then ui uh button and if it and on the button the text isn't super sharp it's not very sharp you know these default button stuff so what you can do to get better text and also more control over it is go over here to the top click window package manager and then yours will look like this at first. It might take a sec to load it in. Just type in text and text max pro will show up. Probably like this. You can click it and you can click install or update if you don't already have it installed. So just let it do its thing. It might be a up here that asks you to import some stuff. Just click it. Just go through all the stuff that pops up and import it all. Uh, it's pretty simple. So now what we can do is right click on canvas and then text match pro button. And as you can see, the text is much better and much more sharp. So what I'm going to do is hold this and we can scale it up like this. And it's a bit annoying to kind of keep 
It's just, it's not the best scaling because if you want it to go this way, then you have to also go over here and drag it that way. It's a whole ordeal. So, what I am going to do is click it, hold Alt, and then it'll scale like this, which is, in my opinion, a lot better. So, let's kind of make the button about that size and move it up to about there. And then let's rename it to Play. Second thing is go over here change this to play because yeah i'm gonna change it to white text uh let's just take this for now and turn the alpha channel all the way down on the play button image alpha channel sorry this is my first tutorial so sorry if i'm a bit too fast feel free to pause the video uh so else am I going to do? I'm going to scale this up to 110 is going to be the font size, and I want it to be bold, because bold text looks the nicest. Um, so now what we want to do to kind of make it look nice is add an underlay. So this probably will be unchecked for you. I'm not sure why it was checked for me. Uh, so here it is. You and normally all these will be right in the middle at zero. I'm going to take the X offset, which you can see up here if I move it back and forth. It changes the X position of the shadow. I'm going to take it all the way right. And then on the Y, you could make it go up or down. I'm going to do down because I think that looks best. And then the softness I have set to 0 0.5 because if it's too sharp, it'll look like that. And if it's too soft to look like that. So I'm just going to do 0 0.5 with it for now. So that is the play button. And one last thing is let's... this The anchors you want to do mostly on buttons. Especially like specifically buttons. Um, it just will help with the scaling of... Well, the buttons. Uh, so let's duplicate this once. And call it... Options, options, uh, and I'm lazy, and I'm just gonna copy that, which is Control C, and then paste it, Control V. So W or we'll pull up this, or you could go up here and change it to this. I'm gonna select this because actually we need to pull this down to the middle of the screen. Which is right here. So it looks like we need to pull this button up. Or actually, what we can do is click this and just scale the button down and then pull it up to thumb. Uh, we also need to scale this, the options down. Uh huh, there we go. And we can actually pull this back down a bit. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so options we need to change the anchors on because they're in the wrong spots. So you move the button. Oh, uh, that happens sometimes. The annoying to grab these anchors. I don't know why you like that, but whatever. So options is now there. And oh crap, one thing that we forgot to do. I'm actually going to delete options because what we forgot to do is, as of right now, if you hit play, you can't tell that the button's being pressed. So what we need to do is go over here, change this all the way there and there. And then Normal color, let's change alpha channel all the way down to zero, so then it's clear. Highlighted color, so whenever you're hovering your mouse over the play button. Let's kind of change it to like that. Uh, and then press color, let's do about halfway, so 130. And then on selected, let's do 132. Uh, and then see, it highlights and then you press it. And it will do that. And, yep, it's nice. It looks nicer. And also, it looks like the button needs to be scaled down a bit. Because that shadow is going out of the button, which looks a bit, a bit weird. Let's see what it looks like now. Yep, that's better. Okay. So, let's duplicate it again. And call it options. And then, I'm going to copy that. Go down to text. Paste that. Uh, and then click this, drag this down to the middle. That looks like middle to me. Change to anchors. There we go. And then let's duplicate play again. Pull it down to about 
here. Uh, that looks good. And then call it quit. Uh, quit. And then drag the anchors down again. Okay. So, second thing we need to do. Uh, so we just created the, like, main part in the menu. Well, you'll see it first, so options, quit, and play. As of right now, though, these buttons don't do anything. Okay, so what we need to do now is right-click and then create empty, which is just a game object with nothing on it. And then anchors don't really matter for this one because this is just going to group stuff. So we can scale it up. Let's do like that. And let's call it start. Not start. Okay, there we go. Take all of this except the background and drag it down onto start. So therefore, now what we can do is disable start. So what this allows us to do is, well, let's duplicate this. Oh, in duplicate, you can right click and duplicate or control D. Uh, sorry about that. And let's disable start and then call this options. Okay, I already had that copied. Uh, let's expand this. Options right here. What all I want out of it is the text. And options in play can be deleted. This can be called back. If I can spell. And then this will be back. There we go. Uh, minimize that. Oh, let's pull options up. So then it's like text at the top. So then you know it's options if that makes any sense. And then let's also grab the anchors for options and drag them over here by options. Back. Let's pull back down a bit. Probably there's good. Let's take this here. Okie dokie. And then let's create a slider, which will be a volume slider in quotes. And let's where is it? Uh, slider. Right under the Technist robot. And then let's click this tool. Control, not Control, Alt, and then drag. Now let's get it about there. I think that's good. And then let's go open the slider up. Uh, handle slider, handle, and let's disable the image. Because in my opinion, the image is not very nice looking. So... Click here, fill area, and what this will change is this part where it fills, which here I'll show you. So, what that will change is this. See this white, not the gray? So, what I'm going to change it to is a fairly light-ish green. Uh, something like here. That's probably good. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, yep, that looks good. Okay, and then for the background, which is obviously the background, let's change it to a really dark green. Uh, not that dark, though. Probably more like that. Let's actually change the fill area again to something more like that. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks good. And as you see, whenever it's all the way full, it doesn't quite go to the end, which is quite annoying. So what you can do is click slider, and this will change that by, like, the default. So do that, and then go over to fill area, double-click on it, and you can zoom in, and you can drag this right here. So let's drag it to right there, which is full, like what looks like full. We can drag this back down to zero. Zoom out. Also, what we need to do is take these anchors and drag them. Click play. And then, ta-da, it looks full and it's all the way there. Obviously, there's that, but I think that's perfectly fine. In my opinion, I think it's fine. So now, we have, not, we have an issue where we can't go back to the start. So, how do you fix that, you may ask? Well, go to this back button, and there's a thing called on-click, which is an on-click event. So when you click the button, so we can create, add a list. So add to, and then take the start, drag that game object into the top one. 
select this no function game object and then set active bool. So what this will do is it'll set the game object active or non-active. So I'm going to click this and then what we need to do with the second one, you may have guessed already, take the options, drag it here, game object set active bool to false. So this should theoretically, we should be able to go back to the start. Ha! So what is that? So that is disabling this and enable enabling this. So the next thing we need to do is collapse this. So do that and disable it. And then enable the start again. And then the options button we need to do the same thing, but the opposite way. So now what we can do is we can go to options, change this, and then back, and then options. So obviously this does not work for volume. So one last thing I forgot to do is go here, go to text. Let's duplicate this text again and drag it down to about there. Click this. Uh, let's make it fairly small. All we need to do is go to the text, and apparently I didn't record some with my mic. So all I did was I went to this, I duplicated, dragged it down, scaled it down, and then put volume on it. So yeah, that is what it looks like. So now what we need to do is I believe we can just disable this, enable this, and then what problem we have now is when we click play, it doesn't do anything, and quit, it doesn't do anything. So what we need to do is write a script. So what I advise to do is always create folder so so you can organize the sprites. So like the background will go in the sprites. And then let's create another folder called scripts. There. Uh, in here we can create C sharp script and let's call it menu. Then what we need to do is go to the canvas after it compiles. Canvas, drag the script onto it, drop it, and then there. All right, so now you can double click here or you can double click, click on it here and it'll open it up in Visual Studios. So we need to get rid of this and let's clear some space by clicking enter. And then I'm not really going to explain the code too much just because code is it's not really a coding tutorial uh so yeah so now we're going to add name the namespace um i forgot what they're called i can't remember so using unity and oh crap using if i can type not being stupid me unity engine dot scene management and then semicolon so we need to create a void or a, um, I'm blanking today with code. So public void uh, start game, well, not nine, shift and then brackets. Like that. And then we need to create another one, public void quit game and that's that all right so let's get rid of the space in between these so it looks nicer all right so we need to do scene if i can type and also please go away it's a very what the heck sce why is it not playing it there it is main manager dot load next load scene uh, and then scene manager, get active scene dot, well not dot, parentheses, and then a dot, build index plus one. So what this line of code will do is it will get the current scene that we're in and then plus one. So plus one will say basically load the next scene. So what does that mean? We can go here, file build settings and this will pull this window up so these are the scenes and this over here is the index so this scene right now that we're in is scene zero so we can create another scene so let's go to scenes create this and then scene level one it's not going to be anything in it uh let's see this 
just going to look like that, but that's fine. So when I take that scene, or scenes, and drag it here, and then what those will do is it will plus one. And it will load that scene. So now what we're going to do is, on the on-click event for play, drag the canvas into it, and then go down to our script here. Click start to game. So theoretically, this should work. Yep. Loads the next scene. Sweet. Now we need to do one to our equip. So let's do application. Oh, if I can type that. Quit. Aha. So immunity won't quit the application. So we need to know if it's working. So let's do a debug.log and then quit. Over here, Princes. Save that. Go here. And then uh, over here, it should say uh, quit whenever we click it, which means it's working. And oh, yeah. Uh, help if I went here and actually like set it up properly. So drag canvas, menu, one, and quit game. Hit play and quit. So, let's put a, trying to put several times, so that's good. Options works, play works, so that's it. Um, that, we have made a very simple menu. Uh, don't, only things that aren't here is, well, like, obviously, this is just a very simple menu. The only thing that doesn't work is the volume, which I will not be doing today. That is because that would require its own separate video. And there's other tutorials for it. It's not very complicated. It's really simple. Um, it may look complicated if there's a tutorial. Uh, if you guys want me to make a tutorial on how to make like a settings menu, then please tell me in the description. Uh, not the description, the comments. And don't forget to like the video also and subscribe. I have been working on a game called Quest Search for the Stolen Crown. And I have devlogs here. And hopefully soon I can get an open beta out, so then you people can test it. But I am still a few months away from that. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching this video. Smash subscribe, and don't forget to share if people, like, share this video if you know somebody that this might be useful for. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week. I guess, yeah, next week. Bye!